Mercedes Benz W163, remove and replace the whole dash. First thing, we'll disconnect the battery. This is the negative terminal on the battery. This is the positive. We'll disconnect the negative. That's a 10 millimeter. Because of how short this cable is, it's very easy to accidentally reclose this circuit. So I put a little plastic cap on there that will prevent the circuit from closing in case this cable, like it just did, accidentally backs up towards that terminal. You just put a little something on that. Or in the very least, tie this back, maybe zip tie it over here. All right, now we'll remove the instrument cluster. Adjust your tilt well so that your wheel is all the way down and lock it. We'll take this top piece off here. On the side, you can see back here, there's this little tab. So you're just going to push that in with a pick or something. And then on the other side, same deal. Looks like it's broken on this one, but you should have a... Yeah, it is broken on this one, but you should have one there that you'll just pull back. And then once you get those both out, you'll be able to pop this off. Once you have that off on both sides, you can kind of squeeze it like this. And you'll be able to clear the back. And bring it up over the cruise control knob. You do have to be careful. Okay. You can see it's got these on the front too. So if it feels like it's catching on something, just keep squeezing it until those clear. Now we'll take out these panels. Just take a nice tool, it's not gonna scratch anything. Get in behind here and pop this off. And turn it at the bottom like that. And then you'll do the same thing on the, on the other side. Make sure I got this out and out there. Okay, I'll show you here. To get this electrical, just kind of took a tool in here and pull it up. Now on this side, same deal. Just get your same tool under here and you're just going to pop it off. Okay. Right. That's what that looks like on the back. That's that left one. That's the back of that right one. So you can see these just pop out. There's no finessing it. Now we can take this trim piece off that goes around here. Down here, you can see where my thumb is. Pull that out. And then there's one on this side too. So you pull both of those up and then you're gonna push it down. So I just did that. And then, once you have it out, so I got it out on this side. Over here, it's still caught. I have to get it down a little bit. There it is. Okay. So that's what that looks like there. On the back, this has a special shape here. See that? So keep that in mind because that's going into this groove. It's right down here. When we put this in later, you'll see that tab goes here and then you push it up. So don't break that. Now just a regular flathead screwdriver to remove this plastic screw. And you should have a plastic screw there. This one's missing it. Now we'll get in here and remove that one. And that one. Those are both 7 millimeter those two screws out it's as easy as just pulling this forward I'll tip it forward a bit and there's one electrical connection to get this electrical there's a little tab right here I can't really get the camera on it but I'm pressing with my finger and then that'll allow this to clear and it'll automatically pull that out like that All right. obviously it is easier to remove this when the steering wheel is not in but I realize a lot of people aren't going to want to take the steering wheel out so you're just going to kind of want to finagle it it can be done you just have to figure out the exact path 
can watch these tabs and that out like that. All right, now over here we'll take this one out. That is a seven millimeter. You can pull this back and it's probably gonna make a mess. How did I just move that thing that makes all that dust? And this is the sensor for the headlights. Just pull that out just like that. And then over here, we'll disconnect the motor. Kind of, so you can't see my hand, but right here, you just push this in here and you'll be able to slide it out. Still on the driver's side, and we have these two here, here, and there. Those are Phillips. Now we'll take the radio out. You need to make a couple little keys like this. I'll put the dimensions in the next slide. And you'll also need your radio code. This is the code for this radio. To get your code, just call up Mercedes and ask them for the code. And you're just going to put a key in this side and a key in this side and then just press them in. And then once they're all the way in, you can grab the radio and slide it out. Okay. This is what those keys are doing if you look over here. Watch what happens. I pull the key out. See how that flips out? So that's what the key is doing. It's pressing that, locking it in. Let's pull this out. There's a couple things to disconnect on the back here. This up here, this just pulls out. I think that's the antenna. This here, you squeeze it, pulls out. And then these two here, you just push these clamp, little clamp things in. And I might have to have, might have to grab my other hand to do it. You know, so just pull those guys out. Okay. And the radio is free. Oh, in here there are two seven millimeter hex head hex head screws. There's the one there. And then on the other side, there is another one. They're easier to just reach in and feel with your hand. There's the other one there. So we'll move those. Now we'll pull the A-pillars off, the A-pillar trim here and on the one on the other side. Okay, so you might have to, for this A-pillar trim, you might have to get behind here, like with a pry, and loosen this weather stripping, which I'll so show in a second. This one actually has a broken clip. So I can get in here. First, pull this weather stripping off. You just give it a good tug. But you have to get in behind here. Make sure your hands are very clean. And pop this off. You do have to give it quite a tug. This can be a real pain. All right, this one's in pretty bad shape. The center part of this is broken. And then for this center clip, when it comes time to reinstall, you'll just have to move the clip uh, probably down a little bit so it can bite into that. Same deal on the other side, remove that one. Now behind here we're going to pop this open. Just pop it open. And then there's a Torx 25 back here. Same deal on the passenger side. Now this vent here, yours hopefully won't be broken like that is, but this vent pops up. It feels like you're going to break it when you're pulling it. Oh, well, there you go. They can be very brittle. Oh, this one's all broken in a bunch of spots. Oh, yeah, it's all torn up. Uh, don't break yours. I'll show you on the other one that I got at the junkyard. It, it does pop up. Down in the, this one is very brittle. Let's take this out. Hopefully yours what comes out in one piece. And then there's a screw down here. It's uh, another one of those hex heads, and then one right here. Both of these little screws are seven millimeter. You don't have a ton of space here because of the windshield, but so we'll remove both of these. And right now with the glove box, we're gonna remove this one, this one, that one, and that one. And those are all Torx 20s, Torx 20. All right, with those four Torx screws removed, then you're just gonna go up here and just 
use anything that will fit in here to pop this up. And this one too here might be broken. I'm just going to push it up until it goes all the way up like that. And then you'll be able to take this glove box out. Let me focus it. There you go. Now, on this side, there'll just be an electrical connection for the light. There it is. It's just the same type as like a cigarette lighter. So you just pull it out. There you go. Okay, now we very carefully remove this and this. You just kind of barely get behind it. Okay, nice and easy. And then, once you have it enough, you can get your fingers on the top. Let's see, you can just careful, careful, kind of pull it out. Okay. Alright. To disconnect this electrical, you gotta get back here and pick this black part up with the pick. Okay, for these down here. This one's a little, little unusual. Just use the pick to kind of pull it out like that. And then this is this is an, a regular kind of one with the tab. Pull that out. Pull that out. Pull that out. Now for these down here, I find it easier to just pop the whole switch out, so you can just kind of remember the order. You can put them in whichever way you'd like, but it's easier, in my opinion, to just pop these switches out. So you have this latch here and this latch here. You just push, push them both in at the same time. And the whole switch will come out. I think that's easier than disconnecting these electrical because they're uh, kind of annoying. This is easier, in my opinion. With those disconnected, we can put that aside, and now there's four more. One two, three, that one's missing, and four. Those are all seven millimeter. Don't forget these two on the bottom. I'm here and grab these, these two. Those are both Phillips, one there and one there. Now, you can pull this down. And you know the drill in here if you've ever been into your blower motor. Last check to make sure you've removed all of the screws. There's the Torx that's here. The glove box. Then down here, those two Phillips. Up here, that one there. And the other one there. Behind the radio, those two that point upward, one over there and one over there. And then these four, this one here, that one there, that one there, and that one there. Now I'll go over to the driver's side. Driver's side, that torques there. I think I already said that one, but that one there. And then behind here, uh, the one that is here. And then obviously, if you can see this, you've already removed that and that because you had to, to get the cluster out. Make sure that you have the electrical disconnected for the light sensor and the motor disconnected there. And also on the driver's side, those two down here. So if you have all those fasteners removed, at this point you can start to remove the dash. So over here, there's some clips on this part that go into here. So what you can do is just kind of reach in behind it and pop it down. See this clip and that clip, what goes in those holes? And now this will be free on the top. 
I'll come over here now and do the same thing right here. That's separated and that is separated. Okay, you can see that the top part of the dash is starting to get free. Um, let's put this out of the way. Go ahead and grab this. And then bring that out. And then on that side there, we need to break that free. I'm gonna go on that side. Right here. This is why I think it's easier if you take the glove box out. You can kind of get your hand in there. Okay, so now this bottom part of the dash is only on right behind there, so I had to start to move that down. And then the top part is free. Okay. Let's get the top part's moving. See that's up. There we go. Okay. Okay. So that is free. Okay, when you move the dash a little bit, you'll see this sensor here. That's for the automatic temperature. So just pull that out and leave that in the cab. So the dash is now free, and it's just a matter of getting it out of here. Sometimes it's helpful if you have an extra set of hands. Let's try to get this thing out now. See over here at the steering wheel, kind of running out of real estate. I'm gonna go to the other side of the car. All right, top dash is out. I'm gonna take this out next, but I want to show the blend motor. Looks like we had a little mousy mouse in here. This isn't supposed to be like this. This is what a mouse would do. There's the blend door motor right there. You can see why it's a real pain to, to reach it. You don't have to remove the dash. That's the official way of doing it. The, uh, the pad here for the airbag, this is the airbag. The pad for the airbag, you can sometimes peel it up and if you can just get enough to lift up the dash, you can reach it. The downside to that method is that you'll have to break the deployment indicators on the passenger side airbag. This is the dash we just removed. It's upside down. So that's the driver's area where the cluster would be. And this is the passenger's air bag here. So if you're going to go in through there, you do have to break the airbag deployment things right here. 
there's another one over here. Those are what hold this panel down, this airbag pad on the outside down. So if you break those, you do have to come up with a way of, of closing this somehow, but not closing it so much that it wouldn't be able to open if the airbag went off or if it would obstruct the, the path of the airbag. So you do it that method, you're peeling this up, you're pulling the glove box out, you're removing the airbag, and then you're reaching in over there to the blend motor. That's if you don't want to take the top of the dash off. Then you put everything back together and you come up with a method for securing this. But if you don't want to do that, then this is that's the blend door motor. Now if you're only in here to replace this, and see there are just three Phillips, one electrical connection, and then a, a mechanical link over there that I'll show how to disconnect. Okay, to remove the electrical, just squeeze right here and here. It'll slide right out. Right. And you got those three Phillips. Now, before you pull this up, take your finger and hold down on this little lever, okay? Hold it just like that. And then just kind of wiggle this up. That's it. All that work for this. So then you grab your new one and you put it back in. You see it's got that, looks like that's a hexagon shape. And you'll just line up the screw holes and that, and you'll be able to push it back in. Make sure your screw holes are all lined up. Your screws back in. And plug your electrical back in. And that's it. Well that work just for a 30 second swap. If something happened or you were fiddling around with this and you dislocated this little lever, just make sure you put it back in the track. There's kind of like a ball joint on the other side of this lever. Just make sure it goes back in that track and that the other side is around the hexagon part on the motor. Okay, as for this bottom piece, piece of the dash to pull this out, you can see it's pretty much loose. So you just have to finagle it around the steering wheel. If you're removing the lower dash, which again, you don't have to do if you're just doing the blend door motor, you need to disconnect this parking brake cable. You can see right here, it just comes out like a, like a throttle cable or anything like that. Okay, and then just leave it there to this electrical. You can see it's right below there where we took that cable off. To get this electrical, you're going to press this part right here with the pick and then pull up on it. I need both hands, but it's the same way on the passenger side. And one over here on this passenger side. Okay, I just moved into neutral to give me a little more space with this here. To do that, you're just gonna stick anything that's long and skinny like this in here with your foot on the brake. All right, with all that disconnected, parking brake, cable, and the two electrical, uh, we should be able to pull this out now. Okay. Okay, since apparently a mouse was having a party back here, I'm gonna have to look over all of this wiring because mice like to chew wires. I'm gonna have to look over very carefully all these wires from mouse teeth mark. I just wanted to point out the locations of a few other motors. Looks like there's a motor 
a motor down here looks like that's a motor and then over here it looks like that is a motor there too maybe for the the defrost i'm not positive i'm just was poking around back there and that's what i saw so now it's time to put in in my case the new dash in your case probably your same dash now you won't have to remove this piece even if you're removing your whole lower dash which again you don't have to remove the lower dash to get to the blend motor but i am going to remove this piece don't forget this one back here and then this whole thing will just slide out and that's a real little one that's a 5.5 once you get that out disconnect this here for the 12 volt just pull it out and with that disconnected it's out all right now putting the new piece in or your same one if you removed it you're going to line this up with that because that's a duct so get that lined up and then kind of push it back in place and that bottom piece is on it's in neutral i'm going to slide the bottom dash in now the parking brake thing will probably come out let's pull it out for now open the past the driver's side door okay pretty close let's get it around the steering wheel and then grab all this electrical that goes back through here Before going any further, let's get this parking brake cable hooked back up and this electrical down here for the light. So that just snaps in like that. And then the parking brake cable, we have to put the lever back in. Put the parking brake handle back in. So that's not the brake, you're just going to do the reverse that you did, get it through there. And then around there and then it'll go under all right i can't do it with one hand but i'll show it when it's done right, it should look like that see use that path but then tuck it under you want the cord to be or the you want the cable to be straight and then test it then on the passenger side don't forget this electrical I don't have any fasteners in on the bottom dash, so now I'm going to put the top dash in. Make sure your steering wheel is still in that lower position. And now I'm going to go on the steering wheel side and get it, get it on there. You just have to, when you're putting it in, you just have to make sure that you're not ca catching on anything over here. You can see it's fine there now, but I need to line up the vents back here. Okay, I'm looking through where the instrument cluster would be. You see that down there? That's where we got to get those vents lined up. So you just got to keep an eye on that as you're positioning the dash back in place. And now you put this little temperature sensor back. It goes back in this hole, that hole right there. Before you attempt to put the top piece in its final position, make sure that your bottom piece is pulled back enough that the top piece isn't going to hit it anywhere and make marks and whatnot. You can get an idea of how close you are by looking at this hole over here because this top dash, the part from the bottom dash goes through there and then that one torque screw goes through here and there. So if you just look for that hole, you can see that's the hole right there. So when you have this lined up with that, then that'll be able to line up with that as well. But as you're putting the top dash in, just kind of get an idea how close you are. Don't force anything. 
Okay, I have it lined up. The holes are lined up where that Torx would be over on this, over on this side. And then if you just kind of keep your hand over there, it'll, when it falls into place, it falls into place really nicely. Like that. The top dash is in place. So before putting any fasteners in, we can start to get this bottom dash back in place. Check that you're lined up with that hole for the Torx, and then you can take this piece from the bottom dash and put it in place at the same time you're lining up this and that with those two holes. Then up here, you're lining up that with that hole, and that with that hole, okay. and then those holes will line up there, and there, and then down here, there, and there. Now on this side, same deal. Line up those two and then the one over there where the torque screw is. So there it is. Okay. Get this headlight sensor that just pushes right in. Like that. Now this purple one back here through the instrument cluster, that one gets plugged back in, that motor. Put the insulation piece back in if you took it out. We'll do this one here. This is the Torx 25 that goes in that hole, not the Torx 20. The Torx 20s are for the glove box. Now this one, this is the seven millimeter with the smaller washer. Now this one here and that one here, those are also the 7mm with the smaller washer. Then use these 7mm with the larger washers for here and here. Now then the two that face up, those are also the 7mm with the larger washers. Let's see, if can see them here. One is there. And the other is there. Now we can put this in and we'll just put those buttons in through the back. I'll show you the um, the final order on it. The heated seat is the first one. And when you get them in, you just pop them right in place. Piece of cake. If you wisely had yours labeled like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you won't have to worry about this. But if you didn't, then you'll notice that the buttons are the same but the wiring's different because it's for left and right. So for the ESP switch, that's just going to be in that fourth spot. The lunch wiper switch is going to be in the third spot. But you have two number three window switches and two heated seat switches. One for passenger side and driver side. So the first, the first heated seat switch is the one with the white on the top, white orange. This the other heated seat switch that you're putting down on the other end is this one here with uh, like a tan pink for the top two wires. And then for the number three window, this is the driver side number three window. Top row is orange, blue, gray. And for the other one, so this is the number five spot in that switch order, is blue, blue, green. Okay, so just label them and you won't have to worry about that. For these, this one obviously only really fits here. But if you didn't label these two, they will fit either way. But you need to make sure you have them hooked up the right way. The gray one goes first and the black one goes last. So then we have this little guy here. That's, that's this one. 
which will only fit a certain way because of that little deal. There's still this one yet to connect, but we won't do that one just yet. Pull the radio cords up towards where the radio opening is going to be. You should have one, two, three, four cords. Some of the models might have a few more cords if they got the upgraded sound systems. I'm not sure. So then with those up there, now you can have to put this back into place. Oops. Hold still camera. And then you're going to want to hook this electrical up here. This blue one. That's going to go in here. So with this one hooked in and your radio wires reachable, just push this back in place. It just goes in with the lines up with those little spots. Just press it in real nice and easy. It shouldn't bite you at all. Just like that. Okay. And for your glove box, grab this hookup for the light. Connect that. Connects right here. And then the glove box. Then here and here, you'll use these Torx 20s with the rubber bushing. Here, down here on the bottom, down here on the bottom, you'll use this Torx 20. And then on the top, you'll use these, these plastic things. Those plastic ones, you're just going to push them so they're back in this position because they'll be something like this. And you're just going to reach behind and kind of push it, okay, like that, and then when you go to put them in, just peel, put it in, and then and then uh, press, the, press the little button part in. You have to press those in so that button goes all the way in. It'll snap and then just kind of suck in. Now this one, this is the Torx 25. That's the Torx 25 there, and now we can put this trim piece on. You see it's got a uh, kind of hooks down here. So those are going to hook in there and there first and then these push in to there. So get those hooks parts in first and then just kind of snap it in place. Same thing on the driver's side. Passenger side on the bottom, these two Phillips there and there. That's what those look like. And get those two on the bottom on the driver's side as well. Now we'll grab a couple more of these seven millimeter with the large washer and those are for these up here. With those two fasteners in now we can put this trim piece. These are the little these are little things that snap in. So this one from the junkyard's in really good shape compared to that one that we removed. And so it should just pretty easily oops, snap into place. Just get it started at one end and then just kind of walk around pressing. Now we'll get the radio back in. We got this one here that goes right there. And then we got, take that off, we got this one here that goes there, over here, these two go there, and then this one goes on top, that's in there, and that one's on top, okay, so there's everything hooked up, this this, this, and this. I'll slide the radio back in. I have those keys in so the little flap things are back. Push it all the way in and pull the keys out. 
and it's in. And now we'll do the instrument cluster. Okay, so you just kind of kind of bring it in like this and behind the hazard thing and it'll get in there just right. Then lean it forward and you'll reach in there and grab that electrical. For the electrical, have this clicked down all the way and then line it up with the socket. And then once you have it in, it's gonna automatically kind of do that. You'll feel it kind of snap like it just did. Now I'll just get this instrument cluster settled back in. The plastic ones go here and there. Now I use two of the large washer seven millimeter to go here and here. Now this black trim piece, you're gonna line it up down here and then pull it up on each side. This little part here goes all the way down and in on both sides and then you push it up like that. Now this trim piece you may remember this vehicle actually has the headlight washers but they don't work and it, it has a different bumper and whatnot so I'm just deadheading it back here, but you would want to connect yours. And this goes in, just aligning all of those little clips. Same deal for the other side. Another A pillar trim. These A pillar trims are a real pain in the butt. The first thing you're going to be lining up are these little tabs here into those holes on the bottom. And that's not that big of a problem. The problem is this is where right here, that's where the, the clip on the back of the A-pillar is supposed to go. So if this clip comes off with your A-pillar, you need to take it off and put it back on. And you can, you'll see in this pinch weld, there's a spot where And that's where it goes. And then this part here, this is just the little tool that I'll use to simulate it, but that's where you're trying to get the little thing on the A pillar to fit. So you can see it's it takes a little aiming. Alright, because this clip is broken and I have to put it in that different spot, I'm going to put the clip on and then see if I can't press it into place on that pinch weld while standing outside and looking in. Make sure you're lined in down there really well. All right, I'm standing outside looking in. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but you can see the clip. I'm going to try to get it. Okay. See it there? I'm going to try to get it on that pinch weld. And then I have it on there now, so I'm going to go inside and give it a little whack. Okay, I'm going to see if I can do it. Okay, it worked. All right, so that's an option for you. If yours is broken, that might even be a better way than doing it the other way. That Typically the way it's done is you put the clip on the pinch weld first and then try to aim the A pillar for that spot. But obviously that's kind of tricky if yours is broken like this is. It worked to get it in. It might even be a good way to do it if the clip is not broken. And then this weather stripping, you just push it back in place. You got to push it hard, but you just push it back in place. All right, the only tip I can offer you on these A pillars is you see, we're looking through the glass right now. I'm standing on the side of the car. That right there, you're trying to get it in that little groove. So sometimes if you stand outside and look, you can see it a little better, but it's actually not that one where it's on right now. I don't know if I can, can get it. Okay, see where it is right there? It's not the top, it's the one just above that. Okay, see that little black thing there? I have to be above that. Now we just have this trim piece. So put this on through the hole here on the cruise control. And then you just kind of line this up over your a hazard light and you're gonna have to if you remember you kind of have to squeeze it a little bit to get it past everything 
so you're going to get it past the buttons here for the odometer and then just get it into place. You do have to squeeze it quite a bit. And once you have it in place, it'll kind of fall down. And then you're going to line up that one there. And then there's one on the other side as well. So it snaps together. And then up here in this front part, you can't see it, but behind here, you press it in and you'll get that other little one to clamp. And I accidentally turned my hazards on there. Okay. And that one was broken on this. And I think that's it. Make sure you're back in park. What we'll do next is reconnect the negative terminal on the battery. Reconnect that negative terminal on the battery and tack it down real well. All right, got the dash cleaned up some and it looks pretty nice. It's going to look real nice when the steering wheel is on that. I think the owner will be very happy. I could have sworn I got this at the junkyard to match this one, but I guess I didn't. So I'm going to have to swap that out too. So let's start her up. Oops. Yeah, you want to make sure your windshield wipers aren't on. <laughs> Let's check all the buttons that we fiddled around with. If your lights are on auto and it's nighttime like this, when you put them on, they should turn on. If they did not turn on, you might not have plugged this sensor in. Next thing to check are all our HVAC and the blend. Now, if you did your blend motor, you'd know that noise that you hear when you would change this. And you get that so it should sound like this you know normal and then we also fiddled around with these I'm not gonna do the low end right now uh, fog lights so the fog light button is on okay the fog lights are on and they're off and we also fiddled with these buttons this is the heated seat for the driver so you touch that and your seat should warm up. If it doesn't, you might accidentally put this switch over here. That's your passenger. This is the rear window, so you can check that. Now I'm looking in the rear. Okay, I just saw it go. That's the rear wiper. ESP, not going to fiddle with that. And that's the other window. And I just looked there and that was working okay. And I can feel my seat is starting to heat up, so I'm going to turn that off. So, the glove box, the light should turn on. If it doesn't, maybe you forgot to plug the light back in. Uh, you shouldn't have any kind of airbag stuff going on. What else? Oh, the 12 volt. So you want to stick something in that 12 volt, like to maybe to charge your cell phone, make sure you plug that in. And if you did all of this, you should be sitting pretty. Now we'll do the clock to set the clock hour you're going to pull this out and turn it to the left and to do the minutes you're going to pull it out and turn it to the right the problem is these get very sticky over time and they don't turn so well so sometimes you have to use pliers let's see if i can get it going i'm trying to try to do the hour right now and there it goes I did one there it goes okay all right now for the minutes i'm going to pull it out and turn it right but again, this is, can be very difficult to turn. Okay, it's going now. Once you have it where you need it, that's it. All right, I, I almost forgot the radio. So when you turn the radio on, it's gonna say enter security code. So that's when you're gonna put in your code for this car. It's 44362. So using these buttons over here, four, four, three six two and then see how that says okay you press that button okay and then you'll be able to work the radio again i hope this video helped you thanks for 200 subscribers and good luck with your repair